future of the video game industry outsourcing outsourcing and more outsourcing in this game in this article brought to you again i went on gameindustries.biz.com today or gameindustries.biz today dot com dot, dot com <laughs> in dot this gosh. article they talk about virtuous which is a video game developer but they don't develop their own. So they're basically a contract or a mercenary video game developer where they have studios all over the world and they will work on any piece of your game. They're capable of doing sound effects, visual effects, AI, different game designs. They can do whatever you want on whatever engine you want, but you have to pay them. And this is a very common business strategy. I work in uh, biotech. I've worked with, Companies of 20,000 people and 50 people. Matt, all... I'm sorry to cut you off. I have breaking news. I'm, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but this is genuine. We're talking about anime today. Breaking news. And it's business related. Hit me. Is it Naruto's live action TV show? You're so close. You're so close. Is it the live uh, action movie? In a desperate bid, you'll never believe what Blizzard is doing. No, they're not making a fucking World of Warcraft TV show better it cowboy bebop x overwatch this this did not warrant a breaking news bro <laughs> in no way nobody cares about overwatch or cowboy bebop who name five people on the planet that care about those things Name two. You were saying? <laughs> what Virtuous is discussing in this GameIndustries.biz article is that as video games become more expensive, they take longer to make, companies do not have the capital to have that type of headcount to be able to do everything that is necessary for their video game. And because of that, the next logical step is to outsource things to not only other studios, but in the biotech industry, they're called CROs and CDMOs, and they basically just stand for whatever type of research you're trying to outsource. A CRO is a, cl a um, clinical research organization. CDMO stands for something similar. So what you're going to wind up seeing is that a lot of these companies are going to say, all of our visuals are done by this team now. All of our, and they're going to have these different contractors and like mercenary groups take over a lot of the unnecessary headcount. Obviously the like core members of a team that design and make sure that the game itself is on track to do what it's supposed to, they're all going to be internal. This won't affect as much places like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Obviously they have the space for the headcount, but still you can get a reduction in force and still pump out games at the same clip by contracting out these different developers and different publishers. So Bobby, your thoughts on this being a sustainable business model, because I know you're big on proprietary software and developing things, especially exclusives on your own proprietary um, Look, engine. Look, here, here's this. You're going to see the video game industry start to go through the same purge that the tech industry did. Mm -hmm. We're already seeing that with layoffs and we're already seeing, seeing that with downscaling in terms of you don't need four people to do the job of one person type thing. Mm -hmm. Do I like jobs being outsourced? No, not at all. But what I rather, I would rather 10 lean operations. Like I'm, I'm very against consolidation. I've said this from the beginning. So mm -hmm. I didn't need to buy Activision. So I didn't need to buy Bungie. Everybody could have just stayed on their own and we could have just had more teams. This is what you get. You get consolidation and you get a reduction in headcount and you get a reduction in price and you get outsourcing. Is it sustainable? Sure. There will always be somebody willing to do the work for less. 
so I, I do want to be clear that this is a different type of out and we're using the word outsourcing because it's it technically is it is using anybody other than your con or your company's resources to perform a task but this is more of a service provider than like we're gonna go to like the middle of nowhere india and pay people six dollars to do an entire like take look, over you, our entire you, you customer look at, service you look at this in the the large-scale production world you have post-production houses you have post-production houses for studios you have uh, contract you have devs that you would never even know exist that work on some of your favorite games 100%. so is this the future is this yeah i guess i don't know to me i think you're going to see the industry shrink internally before you see any more like the the metric on outsourcing isn't what I'm looking for. I understand that it's on the rise, but I think that reduction in headcount is the more timely thing to be watching if you're trying to determine the overall health of the industry moving forward. So so let me ask you. So with the reduction in headcount, how do companies continue to put these games out? Because I like you said, you don't pay people for or you don't pay four people to do a job that one person can do. This mm -hmm. article is saying that you don't need like you might not need four, but you need three. And companies are lowering it to one and then outsourcing those other two people so they don't have to pay benefits and things like that. It's all some other that's, company. But listen, that's the way the wheel turns. Guys. Agreed. Agreed. But how do you feel about that for the mega giants? Because it, a small studio is definitely going to take more advantage of the whole platform of utilizing everything that this place has for offer because they have the idea, they have the basics down, and they're able to get some of this out, but they're just trying to turn it around as fast as possible and cheap as possible. So they're going to go and outsource and take on a service provider like this for some mercenary work. The Sonys of the world, the Microsofts of the world, the Nintendos. Where do you think they will leverage things like that? Things like this type of outsourcing? I don't think, I think Nintendo's an outlier, so you, you can't really point to them. And with Microsoft and Sony, because again, Nintendo, you don't see large scale layoffs. It's very, very rare. They, they like, usually let me get raises. Let me tell you something. We see a story in the, you know, between now and the election, if Nintendo's laying people off, all these people, all these Bitcoiners, hey, all time high. Take your money out and fucking sit on it. Put because, it if because if Nintendo's laying people off, that's it. That's the last straw. Speaking of N people that are doing financially good, like um, financially well, like Nintendo, Capcom <laughs> also saw a bunch of raises and again, Japanese, outliers. Japanese. 100% outliers. Outliers. Sony and Microsoft. Um, I think you will see more fat trimming before you see people come in from outsourced teams. That's just my take on it. I, I think you, they have to identify true cost for their games. I think they overinflated. And I think because they are about 18 to 24 months behind because of the live service gamble. Yep. And once you kind of get that, then you can start accurately forecasting again. I, I, I think that personally that, that, that reduction in force that they did recently was 100% to cap the losses on that live service thing. And I think from here on, they're like, we're in a fine position. I th Quite possibly. I would be very surprised if we see additional layoffs from Sony. I think that I think I, you see it from Microsoft before Sony just could be because of how much bigger they are. Yeah, I think you'll I, see a lot more consolidation there. And I would also say that Microsoft really hasn't, uh, specifically in like the Xbox realm I'm speaking of, they really haven't had much of an effect on Xbox gaming because those 1,300 people that we talked about a couple episodes ago, that was because of the merger. There was redundant position. So listen, it's never good when people leave their jobs. Of the like severity of company financial health that goes off, if in a merger you lose a couple people, you went through That's a merger. That's the way the wheel turns, yeah, baby. There, there's redundancies. There's no way that you were like, oh, yeah, look at that. Our company seems seamless. And, like, you're telling me that the procurement officer 
Do you need five of them? No. Do you need 75 customer service people? No. There's built-in redundancies because not it was a merger and acquisition. So I think you're definitely spot on that we will see one from like Xbox Game Studios before we see another one for Sony. But I think the 900 from Sony is all they're going to need because I think they looked at this as a one-to-one metric of this is how much money we lost because of this live service. Just fumble this is what we have to do to make up for it to keep us on track moving forward in 2024 and beyond to get us to those games that we are, will eventually publish in the middle of 2025. Agreed.